you're live. Hi everyone, how you all doing? Uh, happy Friday, the sun looks like it's starting to come out again, which I'm very excited about. It's supposed to be a really nice weekend, isn't it? So, uh, how are you all? Everybody okay? Um, right, what, who's, what are we going to do today? We're going to do a block, which I'm going to show you in a moment. Uh, we're going to do a bit of sewing. Um, but a couple of things I wanted to chat to you about first. Let's get, the, let's get the, the free prize draw thing out of the way first. Let's get that done. So, we popped a challenge poster on uh, to see all your woolly stuff. And I very stupidly picked up the name bag and I haven't picked up the prize. Um, <laughs> we, we've put together a really nice bundle of um, different cottons and all, okay, which we'll do, a, a do as the prize. So, um, yeah, stupidly, I ran over the shop and then realised it wasn't time to get back to the shop to pick it up again. Picked up all the names, put everybody's names in, didn't pick up the prize. Um, but we've put together a really nice bundle of cottons um, for you to, to have a little play with is the prize. So... Um, Thank you for all your posts. It was lovely. There's oh, genuinely some really, really fabulous work going on there. Some lovely knitting and sewing happening. Really fantastic, which was... Oh, I just realised I think I might have cut that wrong. I'll have to check that in a second. Oops. Um, so thank you for all that. It's always, always lovely to see all your work. So there was uh, 68 comments in total. So all your names... Oh, I'll put that one back in. All your names have gone into there. So... Give him a good, hang on, make a bit of noise. Give him a good shake. Okay, groups, can you pop your hand in and pull, in a, pull out a name for me, please? Have a good rummage. There you go. Okay, who have we got? Ha! Meg Fowler. There you go, my darling. Oh, you'll be able to make some more little dolls. I saw your little cutie dolls that you uh, made. Fantastic. That's coming to you, lovely. Well done. And again, thank you everybody for, uh, like I said, there were a humongous amount of um, entries. <laughs> um, but we will keep doing the challenge posts because we do love to see everybody's work. It's so, some really amazing stuff going on out there. Really, really is, which is fabulous. Um, another little thing I wanted to say, if you're doing click and collect on the website, can you please make sure, can, if, if you're not going to be kept coming for sort of two or three days, can you just pop it on notes in the, on the website in the customer notes bit? Say, you know, no rush or we'll be there next week or whatever. We've got quite a few orders at Click and Collect that have been sat there for about a week now. Um, so if, you know, just, just let us know if, if it's not, you know, a mad, mad rush. If you've done click, if you've pressed the, the Click and Collect bit or option, just... Just us, let us know, OK? It doesn't matter that you haven't picked it up. That's fine. It's just sat there. It's just we don't know whether to start reminding people, you know, ringing people and reminding, OK? <laughs> um, if you could just let us know, that's brilliant. Um, we're looking into um, having a bit of an option on the website where you can actually create an account so you don't have to keep adding in your name and address every time you can actually you know put a, you know create a little account and so you can just put your email and a password in and it'll save your details that's something that um Sean and I were talking about and Seth sorry uh last night and we're just in the process of looking into that just to make it a bit easier for everybody if you're a regular shopper with us um so is that about the website and oh so Moda have we've heard from our Moda rep they are going to be doing um, a, I forgot to print the picture. See, I did print the picture out. I left it with the bag of, bag of wool. It's been one of those mornings. Um, um, they are going to be doing like a um, block of the day type thing in October. Um, it's um, all of their designers have done different blocks and um, they're going to be doing it as, as you can download the pattern for free um, every day throughout October and you end up with 30 blocks. There is a kit that goes with it, um, which we can order the fabric in and cut the kits for you if you want to do it. Um, obviously, if we we could order in and have 10 people or we could order in and have 30 people want it. So if you might, what I'll do is I'll pop a little post onto our Facebook page with a picture of the, the quilt um, and roughly how much the quick, quick kit would be and if you would be interested in doing it, we're thinking about um, actually offering like a um, like a half hour to an hour Zoom class, maybe three times a week, um, which would be free. If you buy the kit, it would be free so that you guys can um, so I can or well, we need to work out the details. Basically, I need to know if you'd be interested in doing it. So what I would do um, 
is I'll pop a challenge post, not a challenge post, oh God, get my words out, I'll pop a post onto Facebook. <laughs> and if you would be interested in making the quilt and us ordering it in, ordering the fabric in, um, we will we'll get some, we'll find out the, what interest there is in it. If you know, if none of you want to, or if there's only two or three, then obviously it's not worth us doing it. Um, but we would maybe do a a class, maybe every day with the block. But I would imagine we'd probably maybe do two or three blocks um, for those people who might want a little bit of help with them. Um, you can download it for free and do it by yourself. But if you wanted a little bit of tutorial time with us, um, that's an option as well. So. Um, like I said, I'll leave it, I'll put a post on and you guys can comment whether you like the quilt, whether you'd be interested, um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, um, so who's coming online today now I've chattered away at you? Uh, we've got Linda, we've got Marilyn, we've got Jan. Hi everybody. Uh, Jackie, Carolyn, I said Carolyn, uh, Suzanne, Sandra. Ah, oh, lots and lots of you today. Sean's there. She said I should have the account set up on the website this weekend. Brilliant. Oh, fab. Thanks, Sean. Um, yeah, there's, um, yeah, that it just might make it a bit easier for you guys. Rather than having to type everything in all the time, you'll just be able to have your own little account. And just like on Amazon, where you just put your email address and your password in, um, it'll save all your details. So we will get that sorted. Sean's, gonna, Sean's working on it, which is brilliant. Uh, so, yeah, so that's all cool. So, um, what was I going to say? I was going to say, we're going to do, no, we're going to do a labyrinth block today. Now, originally, I wanted to do with you guys, um, you might have seen it, it's called Labyrinth Walk, and it looks like a maze, and it all looks 3D. There are just no patterns out there. <laughs> the person who wrote the original pattern, I couldn't find, I couldn't buy her pattern anywhere to look through it. It was out of stock everywhere I could find. And there just wasn't anywhere that I could find a different pattern. However, this is also called a labyrinth block, this one. Um, this is a traditional one. Um, and it's very different to the 3D one. So I've gone with this one because it's actually a really beautiful block. It's given me a little bit of a headache um, writing the pattern because uh, the graphics... Were, were quite um, tricky <laughs> to say the least so um, so yeah so it's a slight change slight change of, of plan it is still a labyrinth block and you'll when you see the block you'll see why but the original one that I wanted to do with you guys um, because it's something that's always interested me is like 3d stuff um, just nigh and impossible nigh and impossible to find a find a pattern and I could have looked at the pattern and broken it all down and everything uh but i genuinely didn't have time to do that that takes a lot of time to re, -en re reverse engineer a pattern um so i've gone with this one which is called a labyrinth block it's very traditional um i'm gonna hopefully i'm gonna put it flat okay so i've done this in um some oak shot oak shot fabrics which i don't know if you can see they kind of change color they're like they're like sh shot you know like shot silk they're not they're cottons but they, they kind of change colours. They've got like this shimmer to them because um, I'm going to make them into some cushions, give them as a, a gift. Um, and the idea behind this one is that you've got this kind of interwoven um, pathway round your, your star in the centre. OK, there are a lot of pieces for this. OK, there are a lot of pieces and it's quite little. I have resized it so it's 12 and a half inches. So if you're doing isolation blocks or you're doing a new Christmas quilt like our Lindy Lou you know you can this will fit in with the 12 and a half inches okay so I've re resized it all um yeah there are a lot of pieces so I'll go through them okay um that pattern if and when I can ever find a copy of that pattern or if anybody happens to have a copy of that pattern it was called um it's by the Guilty Quilter the Labyrinth Walks if anybody's got one lying around Please let me know that I could borrow it because I'd be really interested in, in actually seeing how it's done. I could, like I said, I could reverse engineer it, but um, it's time, time as ever. <laughs> so, excuse me, I'm really hay beavery today, so my throat's scratchy. Right, I've got a list of stuff, okay, um, for the sizes because there's a lot of pieces in this one. There will be a pattern available for it though, okay, so don't worry too much. You can buy the pattern um, and... Uh, We'll send it out and you'll be able to make it. You need, and I need to check the sizing because I think I've cut one of those at four and a half. You need, in your background fabric, so I've used this lovely sort of like grey, grey beige colour. 
um, you need two squares which are four and a quarter by four and a quarter you need four no sorry you need six two and a half by two and a half you need four two by three and a half and you need four two by five and a half in your background fabric in your dark border so that for me is this purple okay uh, which is fabric B I need four two and a halves I need uh, two two inch squares I need two by three and a half and two two by five and a half, five okay there is there are really a lot of pieces in this one I would suggest the pattern for two quid it would make life so much easier um, fabric C which is my blue border I need one four and a quarter and I need six two and a halves for the star points I need four two and a halves and then for my very center here okay I've got one three and a half by three and a half okay you could play with this center you could do quarter square triangles you could do a four patch you could do whatever you want as long as it ends up at three and a half okay so any questions or anything before we get started anybody there Kath says that's a lovely bra I really like it actually it's really really pretty I love the way it looks like it's all interlinked yeah, yeah it's really nice and I have to say I was really mega chuffed with my points on this I did battle with it a little bit because these oak shop fabrics are beautiful they're lovely to work with but if you're not like really I pinned a lot which you know I don't do if you're not really careful with your pinning um, they do move a little bit so um, so yeah I was actually really pleased with how it came together um, right okay we're going to start by making lots and lots of half square triangles so you want and I've written it all out because there is a lot <laughs> a lot going on with this one I want four of my fabric B which is my purple one two three four hang on I'm going to double check this because I've got to remember yeah four fabric B and four fabric C which is that one one two three four okay and I'm going to make half square triangles with those. I then want, hang on, I, and the, there is a lot of pieces, so you're going to have to bear with me. The other two fabric C's, which is my blue ones, with two of my background colours. Okay, like that. So I'm going to make half square triangles with those. And make half square triangles with those. So, sorry ladies, going to be lots of watching me uh, make half square triangles. So please talk to me. What are you up to? What do you think about the moda? Um... Thing. Um, what have you been making? What's been going on? Tina, ask where you put the pattern on the website, please. Yes, absolutely. This this pattern will go on the website, love. Um, it will probably be later on this evening because um, I've got mass going on on this afternoon. But it will absolutely be on the website. Okay. Um, it's one that I would I would struggle to do this with just on off a video. It's they are there's a lot of pieces in it but it's a beautiful block it's definitely worth having a go at it really really is I'm not trying to put you off in any way shape or form because actually it, there's nothing in there that you guys haven't done before you know it's flying geese half square triangles and things so um so don't worry about that Shana says the fabric in the shop slash on the website no this fabric isn't I'm afraid um it's um their oak shot fabrics um which I bought at festival of quilts um and I know I should really be using fabrics in the shop shouldn't I but this is go this is going to be a present for somebody and uh, I wanted to use these fabrics sorry <laughs> um they are um oak shot fabrics um they always I only ever really see them at festival they don't do any of the other shows um, and I end up spending a fortune at them every time I go because I love their fabrics. They're just really, really beautiful. Um, so, yeah, no, sorry, Shahan. I should, I should, see, I'm naughty. I should be using stuff from the shop, shouldn't I? But the trouble is, if I only ever use stuff from the shop, I've got all these samples lying around. At least with this, I knew I, I know exactly where they're going. They're going as pre a birthday present. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to make two cushions with them in a... The colour schemes work. <laughs> so half square triangles uh, with blue and purple and I want four sets and with blue in background. Okay. Any other questions or anything there? Uh, Sandra did say how much was the fabric but she said ignore my question then. Uh, <laughs> yeah sorry lovely. Have a look at Oak Shot, Oak Shot fabrics online. They are stunning. It's quite expensive. 
I think it's like 18 pound a meter something like that it's not a cheap fabric um, but it is beautiful <laughs> it is beautiful so right whip over to the sewing machine and we're going to chain piece all these little um, uh, half square triangles and I'm going to ask you to plug in my um, little iron please because I've just realised I've not done that sorry it's been one of those days today I had plans to get so much done hi <laughs> so much done just didn't didn't and we've uh, been busy in the shop though we've had lots of people in already which is nice so what are you all up to any anything uh... interesting anybody doing anything interesting I've finally started watching uh, Luther on BBC iPlayer. The whole thing is on there. Everyone, if friends have said, oh, you know, it's brilliant, it's brilliant. I've never got around to watching it. I mean, why have I not got around to watching it? Because, you know, Idris Elba, hubba hubba. But, you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a little bit obsessed with watching that at the moment. It's, it's not on in the background today because I want to actually watch it. But um, it is, uh, it's really quite good. It's a bit scary in places, though. There was a killer in the attic in one of the episodes I was watching last night and uh, I was hiding under the bed covers because I knew it was going to make me jump. I knew there was a jumpy moment coming. I literally had the bed covers like that. I was like, I'm not watching this bit. I'm not watching this bit. <laughs> Proper jumpy. So. What have you all been making? Anything uh, interesting? Tracy says, um, I'm quite new to quote him. What would you, uh, what would be an easy thing to try? Um, I would maybe go back um, on our, if you go on our YouTube channel all all these tutorials are on there I would start with maybe something like the bento box pattern that's a really nice easy one um, the 3d illusion actually is a, a block it's a really easy one as well they were a couple of the first ones we did um, what else have we done? Oh gosh, we've done so many now. Disappearing nine patch. If you're thinking about making, rather than making individual blocks and you want to make a whole quilt, a disappearing nine patch quilt is where I normally start most beginners because it's quite an easy one. Again, we've got a tutorial for it. Um, but if you want to do, start with blocks, I would maybe start with those two, the bento block and the arrow. There's the arrow, the bento, and the 3D illusion. Those three are really nice, easy beginner blocks. Um, so if you're yeah, if you're new to it, that's definitely where where I'd point you in the, that direction. Right, so we'll just uh, cut these apart. Okay. Any other questions, there, groups? Uh, Jenny said, "Love Luther. I uh, watched all of them." Oh no, I'm only I've j I'm just uh, just in the middle of season two. So, uh, but yeah, really enjoying it. <laughs> he is delicious. Don't tell my husband, he's gone food shopping so I can say that now. Jackie said I'm sewing some bunting. Nice. Who's the bunting for? Anyone else there? Sorry, this is a bit boring this bit, isn't it? Because it's just watching me stitch fast square triangles, which we've done lots and lots of times before, but I will just just quickly go through it remember so we've drawn the line diagonally across the side and then we're just going quarter of an inch either side yeah so I went draw, drew a diagonal line and we're stitching quarter of an inch either side okay so. they're quite little all the pieces in this actually uh, it's not one I would say for a beginner beginner it's more you know if you've done a few of the blocks then maybe tackle it because um, even though the elements are, are simple, they're little pieces. And to get that sort of labyrinthy illusion, you do kind of want to want to be careful with it. Okay. Right. So, you now have to iron these all, cut them apart and iron them all out. And uh, there we go. So, squish through to the middle. Let me just move my coffee out of the way. Pop that over there. Iron's on now. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to, as we've done before, you can use a rotary cutter and cut up the line, but I'm just going to chop up the drawn line with my scissors because it's quicker. There we go. We've had, um, what have we had into the shop? We've had some new 
uh, rainbow fabric in from Macaro, which is beautiful. A whole it's all a range of blenders. Uh, in they're all sort of rainbow jewel toned really really lovely I'll pop a picture on when I get back to the shop later for you guys and I'll get those onto the website because they're delicious Sarah squeals almost as she uh, <laughs> um, opened up so I'm just setting the seam and then I'm going to roll it back okay so I'm going to roll that back and again a little bit boring for you to watch I'm afraid because it's there's lots of these little bits this, all, this block is definitely all about the prep work. It's all about getting all these little elements done before you stitch them all together. I am going to show you no waste flying geese as well. I'm going to, rather than do it the traditional way, I'm going to show you a different way of doing flying geese next, um, which means you don't get any wastage at all. You know normally with flying geese when we do it with the, the little... Um, the squares and you cut off and you end up with all those triangular pieces the way we're going to do it is completely different uh, and I thought it was a nice other technique to uh, to show you okay so nearly there and then I've got to square these up I've got to square these up to two inches uh, unfortunately there's quite a few to get started I probably should have done these last night shouldn't I but I'm still sewing it well, oh, gone midnight last night, so it was a case of I, my brain won't think anymore. <laughs> I can't do any more sewing. <laughs> right, okay, so squaring up. Let me just move these bits out of the way a second so Drew can get this. Squaring up. We're going to square them up to two inches by two inches, okay? So I'm going to, and let me, in fact, let me do it on this one first for you so you can see this. So we're going to pop a, the diagonal line, the 45 degree line, right down that seam like that. <coughs> excuse me and you need to make sure because that the two inch lines so this one here and this one here is within the fabric okay and then we're gonna as we've done lots of times before but I do always like to reiterate the squaring up because it, a it's important and b people still struggle with it so I'm going to cut off the excess this side and this side and then we're going to turn to the bottom like that and now we can cut directly two by two Okay, so two by two. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, ladies. I am really, really uh, coughing at the moment. So they are little diddy half square triangles. Okay, little tiny ones. Okay, you could absolutely scale this up and do this all bigger. If you weren't putting it in your isolation quilt, you could make it bigger and uh, scale it up and it would be a beautiful centre of a block I think you have centre of a quilt or just bigger cushions okay so sorry I've got 16 of these to do though this, so it's done um, gents it's going to be a, be a little while so talk to me what are you up to what's happening it's very hot in this front room today in this room today I probably should uh, groups can you if you're, you're just pointing at me can you just open that door and just get some air through please Oils. There we go. So what what have you been doing? Anybody got anything interesting to tell me? Christine <coughs> uh, said apparently it's it's in the weeds and the pollen at the moment. Oh, pollen it really is. The my hay fever is off the charts at the moment, and it doesn't only make me snuffly, but it makes me tickly as well, which doesn't help when I'm supposed to be talking. <laughs> I said made a thread catch yesterday in between some difficult phone calls, so no sewing today. Oh, bless you. I hope you're uh, okay, shift, lovely. Shifting dust for mm -hmm. oh. I did see your thread catcher actually, I it was lovely. You did the, the red one, didn't you? It was gorgeous. And uh, yeah, I hope you're okay. Those phone calls weren't too uh, awful. Anybody else there? Anybody else having a little chatter? Mm. No? Karen says from food shopping and my walk this morning. Uh, I plan on finishing a UFO this afternoon. Nice, nice. Oh, I've got so many UFOs, it's crazy. It really is at the moment. Uh, I really do need to get on top of them because uh, <laughs> it's just stuff everywhere at the minute. <laughs> uh, Chris says making journal covers at the moment. Lovely. Tina says it's rather warm, sat in the sun here at the caravan crouching. Crocheting. Sorry. Crocheting. <laughs> ah, lovely. 
Oh yeah, a lot of the caravan sites are reopening now, aren't they, for people to uh, to visit? If, you know, if you've got a got a caravan, Stop. where's your caravan, Tina? Uh, is it by the sea? I quite I quite miss the sea at the minute. Uh, Sandra says, "How would you scale the size up?" How would I scale it up? Um, <clears throat> I would draw it out. If it was me, I would draw it out. Um, so where like these are two inches if you made them four inches you obviously have to scale everything up with it but i do use graph paper i do it a lot when i'm doing patterns and stuff if i'm trying to reverse engineer a pattern you know if it's a traditional pattern and i want to or i want to put a twist on it i use graph paper and i draw it all out um it's if you're an absolute beginner i wouldn't necessarily <laughs> try it if you're an absolute beginner um Oh, um, the Quilters Cash, which is a um, website, I think it's an American website, it's called Quilters Cash, C-A-C-H-E, um, they have hundreds and hundreds of free block patterns on there, and very often they're all in different sizes, so they're, you know, they'll give you the, um, give you the block, and then it will be in like a six and a half inch, a nine and a half inch, twelve and a half inch. So it's worth having a little look on there actually. Okay, nearly there, two more to do. And I know this bit is tedious. I, I hate squaring up, but it's so much, it's so worth it. It really is. Uh, Marilyn says she's going caravaning tomorrow. She can't wait. Are you lovely? You're going down west, are you? Fab. Lovely. You do love it down there though, don't you? Lots of nice walks and things. So uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of them are opening up now. I think <clears throat> just before we came on air, it looks like Drew might be going back to work soon. Looks like they've just announced that pubs are in uh, was it in Wales? Yeah. Oh, it was in just in Wales. Yeah, it would be opening up at the beginning of August, first week of August. So looks like he might be uh, might be going back to. Uh, Back to work soon. I'm gonna to have to train up Alex, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okie doke. So those are all nicely squared up. We'll just get rid of that rubbish. So you should have a little pile of blue and purple ones. You should have eight of those like that, and four of your blue and creamy coloured ones. Okay. We're just gonna pop those aside. So now we're gonna make no waste flying geese. Okay. So I want um, a fabric A, and I just want to double check because I, I cut one of these wrong. I'm hoping it's the bigger one. Ha <laughs> yes it is, good. <laughs> I cut one at four and a quarter, I cut the other one at four and a half, which is good, so I can just trim that down. Okay. <clears throat> this is a slightly different way of making flying geese. And it makes four at once, which is really good. Um, it's a little bit difficult, to, not difficult, that's a lie. A little bit different to get your head round okay so we're gonna start with a fabric a one and I want four of fabric D the two and a halves which is let's do the star points okay because you'll be able to see these nice and easily we're gonna make four flying geese with these so I've got four of my little star point ones and one of those um because I've used a very dark fabric I'm going to use a um chalk pen so I can see it on the back of the four two and a half inch squares, I'm going to draw a diagonal line, just like if you were doing normal flying geese. Okay, like that. I, I, hopefully you can see that. I can see it. So hopefully you'll be able to pick that up on the camera. So it's just a diagonal line, just like if we were making um, normal flying geese or if we were making half square triangles. And this will act, this we actually do this normally with flying geese. We'd sew on the line, but we're not going to do that with this okay again i will put a link up to a table because i think it's spruce crafts that do a really good explanation of this they've got a writ like a written tutorial of how to do this and they've also got a um they do it they've got a table free table on their website that shows you all the different sizes so if you want depending on what size flying geese you need you can do this method if you use their table okay so we're going to put one up in this top corner. I'm going to try and do this towards you guys, actually. So you can see this. So we're going to put one up here in the top left corner, like that, and line up the edges. And we're going to put another one in the bottom right corner, OK? And it should overlap. Can you see? I've got this overlapping bit here. That line should continue up, and you want it to overlap. I'm going to pop a pin in just to hold those in place. 
<coughs> we're now going to stitch down a quarter of an inch either side of that line okay so normally with flying geese it would be on a rectangle wouldn't it and you do one at a time and we'd sew down like that but we're going to stitch either side just like we did with the half square triangles okay we're going to come over here scooch you over and i'm going to sew down quarter an inch making sure that line is all that drawn line goes right the way down through and all my edges are still exactly where they're supposed to be okay so i'm just going to stitch down this one side Yeah. and flip it round and stitch down the other side okay there we go like that oh no wrong one yeah keep pressing the wrong buttons still not used to her <laughs> there we go okay so you've got something that looks like this at the moment all right which looks a bit odd but it does work, I promise. <laughs> so take those pins out. Get rid of that pin. And then we're going to just cut down that line. Okay, again, you can use your rotary cutter if you like, but it's quite easy to do uh, these scissors. Right? Now you want to gently press these out, okay? And you want to press them towards the smaller triangles, okay? So we're going to just gently. And I, you really do need to be gentle on this, all right, because you don't want any of this to stretch like that, okay? doesn't look much like a flying geese at the moment, but it will in a, mo in, will in a second, all right? So you should end up with two pieces, <coughs> excuse me, that look a little bit like sort of angular hearts, I suppose, don't they? Little funnier heart shapes. You're then going to take... Your next one of your other blocks, okay, you four two and a half by two and a half, and you're gonna line that up like that. So it's on this corner here, the unsewn corner, and it's coming out through the points of the heart. <coughs> sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so tickly on my throat today. Okay. We are gonna do exactly the same again, so we're gonna stitch quarter of an inch either side <coughs> now some of you will already have done this method we do it quite a lot in classes when we're uh, when the shop is actually able to have classes because i like it because you don't get all those funny little triangles left over so i'm going to stitch quarter of an inch down both sides of the line again just reline that up because i've just moved, managed to move that <laughs> Oh, ladies, talk to me a minute so I can, my throat can, uh... <laughs> yeah, Caroline says it's a cool way to make flying geese. Mmm, it's a bit different. Yeah, Annie says thank you. Looking forward to Sunday. We were meeting my grand... Uh, my daughter and my granddaughter for a picnic. Oh, well, I haven't lovely. seen them uh, for such a long time. Oh, that's amazing. <coughs> Yeah, it'd be nice to uh, be able to see family and all again properly, wouldn't it? There we go. I'm very lucky. I mean, I haven't seen my boy for ages, my biggest boy. Oh, seems like forever. But I am very lucky that all my other boys live here. So, uh, yeah, okay. So now, once I've... Sorry, I'm just going to do that automatically then. <clears throat> once I've stitched either side, I'm now going to stitch, uh, cut up the drawn line again. Okay. Uh, Jan said Trice and Gin can't make the cough go anyway. <laughs> oh, I should have, shouldn't I? I should have had a little sneaky g and before I came on. <clears throat> so, oh, it's just that horrible tickle. It's from the hay fever. It's, uh, it's just, it does my head in a little bit. So, I'm going to set that seam and roll that one out. And you can see that you've got your flying geese. You do need to square it up, but you would square up your flying geese anyway. But you can see by doing it that way, you've done, you've got your more than a quarter of an inch there. I'm going to show you how to square them up in a second. Like that. So that's two from that side. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on this one. So I'm going to line it up on that other sort of funny heart shape. Like that. And I'm going to stitch down quarter of an inch. So, um, what are you gonna? We're gonna. We'll 
tomorrow or Sunday you'll get what we're doing next week. That will go out on uh, on social. Um, what else have we talked about that I was going to maybe tell you about? We've, we're in an hour and about, actually, let's get some feedback, I suppose, while, uh, while I'm sewing, because there is a lot of random stitching on this one. It's a lot of, lot of um, same stitching, I'm afraid. We will get to put in the box together in a second. <laughs> um, what was I going to tell you about? Oh, we've been talking, we've been, I'm in an hour and about um, whether to maybe do a subscription every month where you would get um, maybe like on a theme. You know, where you would get um, a little sewing project or you would get um, fat quarters to go into you know build into your stash um, whether it could be thread and stuff do any of you actually subscribe to any any boxes um, I don't know if we've asked the question before actually so <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is just it's very dark in here again Drew isn't it mm. it's me saying the Sun's come out it's as gray as anything out there we're gonna square these ones up now sorry I know this is it's a long block this one I'm gonna be on for ages <clears throat> So yeah, if you've any, ever, if you ever, ever, ever done a subscription service, what did you think about it? Would you do it again? Um, so we want to square these up to three and a half by two inches. So I want to find my quarter inch line on my ruler and the point where that flying geese it meets there. I'm going to line that up together. Okay. Cause you want your quarter of an inch for your seam allowance. So I'm going to, you see, I've just trimmed off that bit of excess. I'm going to flip it over and then just do that to two inches and there's hardly anything to come off it's literally just threads really <clears throat> and then you want them to be three and a half this way so half three and a half is one and three quarters so I want the one and three quarter line just there right on the right in the center again okay and it basically it's just the dog ears to come off no yeah there we go that one <clears throat> and that one it really is just the dog ears and then you've got really nice neat little flying geese but with no waste that's all the waste there is on them okay so I'm just going to quickly square those ones up and then I'm going to show you all again is that rain no it's someone in the kitchen oh <laughs> someone's cooking bacon aren't they that's what it is it's sizzling bacon um, and that's that Josh Tina said yes please she'd be very uh, interested in a subscription Okey doke. Um, especially if you, uh, if your pattern suggests, uh, suggestions are in the box as well. Okey doke. Christine says never have, but would, uh, would subscribe. Would subscribe, fab. It's always good to get a bit of feedback. I mean, you guys would be the ones that would hopefully be buying it. So I just thought it'd be worth, you know, before we put lots of work into working out how it's gonna how it's gonna work and stuff. You know, is it something that you you know do you only buy for? specific projects or do you buy fabrics you just think are lovely do you like ideas to be what to do with that fabric um i just thought it would be worth getting some feedback from you guys jan um, says uh not two boxes but i've joined debbie shaw's half yard air uh, club so yes it's uh something i'd be interested cool. in okay -doke. cool thanks for your feedback guys that's brilliant so right nearly there ladies and then I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna do it all once again and then I can lie it all out for you and you can see how all this looks you can see like I said it's a lot of prep work this one you know there is a lot of little bits and pieces but you know where's the fun in always having really fast and simple blocks why not challenge ourselves a weeny bit and do and like I said it's not difficult it's just there's a lot of prep so I've now got four flying geese like that okay i'm going to do exactly the same with the other four and a quarter and the remaining remaining blue ones where are the remaining blue ones gone groups what have i done with them what are these ones no oh there they are no i should have should have four more of those fabric C's. It's not these ones, you know. I've lost them. I'm sure I had them here a minute ago. What have I done? Have I done the wrong ones? No, that's the ones for the, the, the star. That's the ones that go round. 
flying geese one fabric no 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 ignore me if i think i might have written my instructions down wrong gray and black ones sorry ladies there's a lot of instructions with this one so i've done the gray and black ones that was that one and the black ones four c's it's the other way around isn't it oh, i know what i've done i know what i've done i've got two of those i don't need two of those i only need one i need this one I need that one and these oh, sorry can't read my own handwriting i've written the colors down and when i've written it out <laughs> i'd written it the wrong way round. it's one of your fabric c's and four of your fabric a's not the other way round. don't <laughs> right okay so same thing again we're going to put that one and that one like that and do the line straight across oh, it's a sad state of affairs when you can't read your own handwriting when you can't read your own handwriting isn't it real sad state of affairs there we go like that we're going to go either side and i'm going to try and hurry up a weenie bit because i know we're going on quite a long time today but like i said it is a complicated block um anybody having a chat there anybody still there yeah, have i lost everybody already Sounds as I'm enjoying the confusion. Oh, thanks. I was like, what have I done there? I've just written, I've written the numbers the wrong way around on my, on my notes. It is right on the pattern, I promise, because I've tested the pattern. But <laughs> when I just wrote it down in my book, written it the wrong way around. Don't. There we go. So, let's just tuck that one in. It's just, there we go, it's moved a weeny bit. <coughs> So no one o'clock tomorrow uh, and the shop is shut as well, okay? So um, because the shop shop's reopen, um, it's basically our day off now tomorrow. So um, we're not doing a one o'clock on Saturdays now, so we'll see you on Monday. Um, let me just do this one really quickly for you guys. I have done that right now. That's all right. My brain, I've pickled my own brain. I have <laughs> completely pickled my own brain. I can't believe you shut that door. It's cold. Boiling. Oh. Boiled. Maybe I'm just having a moment. <laughs> there we go. Like that. So we'd end up with the two heart shapes and then we need to put another one <coughs> on and then we can finally lay it all out once I've done these ones. I know this is a lot of a lot of listening to me, but sometimes it's nice to do something a bit a bit longer, isn't it? Well, it is when I get it right. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Who watched Sarah yesterday with her slippers? When they lush, I really like them. I think they're rich. She did a really fab job on those. Um, I mean, I'm not a slipper wearer, but I would definitely make a pair of those to like take away when um, you know we're away at shows and we're padding around hotel rooms because you have no idea what's on those floors. Um, but yeah, it's um, at home. I'm I'm always barefoot, but they were really cute, weren't they? Really nice and and really nice and easy to do. <coughs> okay, and then just go down the other side, and then we can finally there. Yeah, Sandra says that's what I'm like when uh, that's what I'm usually like when reading patterns. Oh, I just it was my own fault because I've actually just written I've written it wrong. I'd written it right the first time and then scribbled it out and put it the other way round, but I was actually right the first time and then obviously got see this is what happens. I shouldn't sew at midnight. <laughs> Should let my brain switch off, shouldn't I? There we go. And then chop up that one. We're nearly there, I promise. <laughs> I'm also going to look at putting some more Zoom classes on as well. So lot longer projects, which you guys hear, like we did the Bargello. Um, there are a couple of spaces left on the project wallet. I know a lot of you couldn't do it first time round because it was a wrong, the wrong date. But there are a couple of spaces left, which is next Thursday. So if you did want to have a go at that, let us know, you know, you would need to buy it over the weekend so I can get it out in the post to you on, on Monday at the latest in order to get it to you. <gasps> oh, delivery! I've been waiting for this. This is uh, the Hachanda samples. 
So last little bit, you're going to have to it's just run to the door. So again, I'm going to square these up just like I did last time, quarter of an inch away from the point, trim off, two inches that way, like that. Delivery for me. Yeah. Thank you. Where's all the other boys? They're none of them paying attention today. There we go. And then using that one and three quarter in inch line on the middle just to get these nice and lined up. And then you'll be able to see it. So at the moment, it might be a bit like, what on earth is she doing? Because there's a lot of prep work. But there's also a lot of me chattering, which makes takes time as well. And then we're going to go down there like that. And then the three and a half. That way. There we go. Susanna, when's the next Hachanda demo? Uh, the next Hachanda show is on the 24th of July at 3pm and 7pm. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going up to the studio this time. Um, so, yeah, we're doing uh, our own stuff on the 3pm one, I think. I can't remember now. It might be the other way around. And then June Taylor stuff on the other one so we've got some really fab new rulers where uh, we're going to be demonstrating and some to make some really amazing patterns with them as well so, and then lots and lots of sewing in goody bits on on the other one there we go nearly there right last couple of cuts and then i can put it all together for you <laughs> and i'm not going to sew it all together because it's just a lot of you know rows and rows and rows but we're going to lay it out so that you can see right okie doke oh got there in the end didn't we <laughs> my book can go out the way now <laughs> right so you would start by building this little bit here and i'm going to do this toward well actually it doesn't matter because it's it's twisty so center square like that and you're going to use your star point flying geese all the way around like that Oh my God, someone has baked, made a bacon sandwich and my tummy is now rumbling. You can't believe the smell. It smells amazing. Okay, like that. In the corners, you're going to put these little half square triangles, the ones you made with the blue and the background, or whatever colour you're using, but those ones, okay? And they're going to point inwards so that the background is working inwards. Okay, so you've made like a little, is it an Ohio star? I believe this one is, something like that. Like that. Okay, so that's your centre. You would then, and again, like I said, all of this is in the, uh, <coughs> will be on the pattern. You're going to use these little ones here to build up. Hang on, let me just move this over a bit because we're going to have to build round a little bit. So let me just move this over. You would sew all that together at that point, okay? You'd sew that one to that one to that one to that one, that row, that row, okay? Like that. Then we're going to add another border on. So these ones here, you're going to pop one like this, these little half square triangles. So you need to be careful at the direction they're going. And this one goes like this. Okay. So can you see they're kind of continuation of that bit there. And then we're going to have another one down here. So that goes like, hang on, which way around? It goes like that. And then that one's going to go in like that. Okay, so you would lay this out. So this would all be sewn together and then you would lay those two out and then you would use your three and a halves. So you'd sew that one to that one and then pop a three and a half in like that. So that one to that one, pop a three and a half on like that. And then you would sew those pieces to the block. All right, now we're gonna come down the sides. So we're gonna go that one to ooh, that one like that. And can you see that I'm turning these so it looks like in continuation? So you'd sew that to that. You would add a two inch on the two inch squares to there. So you'd add that one on like that. And then you would add one of your five inches on like that. So you'd sew that in a strip and then add that onto the side. And then on this one, we're going off here. So hang on, I've just got to double check what I'm doing, which way round it's obviously you've got my brain not in gear today 
like that and like that so on your two inch so you sew those together then you sew that one on and that would then which obviously they look too short at the moment because that's because none of this is sewn together yet so you lose your quarter of an inches but that would go on like that okay and then your final rows are going to be like this so you'd have a flying geese that go in the like that like that like that and a like that okay can you see how that blue looks like it's peeking out now and then you've got a three and a three and again none of it looks like it fits but that's purely because none of this is sewn together okay once you've lost all your quarter of an inches it will work like that and then you would have your five inches going this way like that like that like that okay and that would be your labyrinth star block all right so you know don't panic too much i know this looks like it's not fitting it will it really will because obviously you lose a quarter of an inch on all of these which then make these sizes right because you would sew this piece together you'd add top and bottom sides top and bottom um, sides and then top and bottom okay um, and then once you've sewn it all together be careful with your nesting okay so really think about when, when you know, do it, go slow and steady with this one. It's not the easiest block in the world to do. It's not, diff it's not without any of your realms of uh, sewing, okay? But you do just need to go a little bit slow and steady and really think about how you're ironing stuff. So I would, with this one, you know, I'd sew that to that first. And then we're going to sew those down and add them on and make sure you're nesting really well. Make sure you're... Let me show you the back a second it's not the, not the neatest but it's not horrendous okay so make you know you can see i've made sure i've ironed them in the right direction and stuff all right sorry for the lots of waffling sorry for watching me having to watch me do lots and lots of oscar triangles and flying geese but i wanted to show you that no waste method i think that's a really i love that method of making flying geese and it seems to work most times um i do hope you <laughs> have a go at the block I haven't put any of you off <laughs> it's definitely definitely worth playing with and there's nothing stopping you you don't have to do a star in the center you know you can play again is one you can play with I wouldn't mess with those borders they're quite precise but there's nothing stopping you you know you could just do um a square and snowball you know those bits here so you don't have to have a star you could have a big piece of fabric and just snowball the corners on it add corners to it you could you know, play around with the central piece and stuff. You know, so lots and lots you can do with it. I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't mess with the measurements of the borders. Um, I will put a link up for um, for the Spruce Crafts for their no waste flying geese way thing and how you can you can um, scale up and down blocks too. It's a really really good little uh, little written tutorial they've got on it. Um, any questions? Any comments? <coughs> uh, Linda says thanks Sarah and Drew that's Susan all right says, that's lovely thank you my pleasure my pleasure sorry about oh, I can't believe I didn't can't read my own writing it's disgraceful <laughs> tell um, the kids off for that <laughs> Tina says thanks it's lovely good good uh, good we'll be having to play when I get home um, enjoy the joy weekend at the caravan sounds amazing <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's it. cool lovely lovely right sorry for the really long session and lots of just slightly boring sewing today watching me sew anyway but it does make a really beautiful block it's just all about that prep work um and the web the pattern will be on the website later on this evening so you'll be able to uh with the right uh the right <laughs> directions on it <laughs> not the wrong ones which i wrote down in my book um so there is definitely right the pattern <laughs> and uh yeah we will see you on monday have a lovely lovely weekend um i will pop up some posts about that moda sampler quilt um if anybody is interested in that um and we'll see you all on monday have a lush weekend guys take care bye